How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar, and today I want to test out, can you directly connect a solar panel to a 12-volt battery? Now, if you have any experience with DIY solar, that'd be a no. You would at least need a simple PWM charge controller like this 10-amp charge controller from Renogy in the middle. So you plug your battery into the charge controller, then you plug your panel into the charge controller, and then this would really be managing that power flow into the battery. But in this scenario, the seven watt panel, it's a Thunderbolt panel, and there's a few different types out there. You'll find a link in the description to a similar one. These are actually made for charging batteries or let's say conditioning batteries. So in this application, they do not call for a charge controller to be between the battery, which is a very interesting concept. And there's a few applications that this would come in really handy. For instance, I have a dump trailer that I don't use very often, and it would be nice to have a small solar panel connected to that 12 volt battery to be conditioning the battery. So when I need it, I just hook up to the trailer and there's no issues with the battery and it's ready to go. And I never need to plug it into charge. So this panel comes with a simple SAE connector, and then you can either connect it directly up to the battery here, or you can actually put it inside your car, which is another cool application. Let's say you had your car sitting for a couple months. Could you put a small solar panel on the dash and connect that to your cigarette lighter, which is the other end that you could use, and it would keep your battery in good condition. You don't have to worry about having a dead battery when you go back to your car. So let's test that out today, see if it works. We got a little bit of overcast sky, but we do have some sun coming in. So we'll get kind of a range of sun. And then I'll go ahead and connect up an energy monitor to see what is that voltage and amperes that we're delivering to make sure that that is something you can continually deliver to the 12 volt battery without damaging it. So let's jump into it. So to take a few data points, I'm gonna use that energy monitor that has the MC4 connectors on it. Now that has a load side and a source side. So the source side is gonna be our solar panel and the load side is gonna plug into the cigarette lighter adapter inside the truck. But to do this easily, I'm just gonna install some MC4 connectors on that harness. So I can put that energy monitor right in line with that harness. And then I can plug in the SAE to the cigarette lighter adapter. All right, so the sun's starting to come out. We're gonna put this guy inside the truck, more of that car application, to see what kind of voltage and amperage we can get out of it. So I have the cigarette lighter adapter running in the center console going into the energy mon monitor, which has already powered up the energy monitor, but we do not have any amperage coming through because we, we have not connected the source side, we haven't connected the panel side. So that's where I'm gonna put the seven watt panel up here on the dash. I'm just gonna put that on the dash and I'm gonna connect this directly up to the cigarette lighter to condition that battery during the time that I let the car sit. Okay, so like I said, the sun is coming out a little bit more and I can already see some of the power coming through. Seven watt panel, and now we are starting to get 1.9 watts out. So the voltage is at 12.5 volts. So that's well below what your alternator would even deliver to your battery. So that's definitely within a safe range. And then amperage rise, we're only at 0.1 amps. Now a trickle charger, so a slow car battery charger, is usually in the one to two amp range. So we are well below that. And that is one of the main reasons why we can keep this connected for long periods of time without being concerned on overcharging the battery. All right, so I'm gonna let this run for multiple hours. I'll take multiple data points along the way to see how high we can get the power out, especially if the sun comes all the way out. And then we'll see overall how many watt hours did we accumulate during this test? And is this a feasible solution to keep your battery conditioned or maybe even charge it up a bit? So I ran that test for a couple more hours. And to answer the question, can we directly plug the solar panel into a battery without causing any damage? I would say the answer is yes. We saw the voltage was about 12 and a half volts and the amperage was only tenths of an amp. So throughout the test when the sun was coming out a little bit more, now this is winter in Illinois and it's mostly cloudy day, the max I saw was 2.2 watts out of the seven watt panel. Now this application to condition your battery if you left your car for a long period of time, there is a caveat. What I suspected did happen, and that was my cigarette lighter after the key was removed from the ignition did turn off after about 30 minutes. And I knew that because when I went in, I saw open circuit voltage of over 20 volts coming from the panel. 
So in that case, I could not take the key out of the ignition, just plugging this panel into the cigarette lighter and it would continue to charge for weeks and weeks. That's not gonna work. I would have to go directly into the battery. So you're gonna need to check your car and see if your cigarette lighter is always powered for this application to work. Now for me, I'm actually gonna install a 1.5 watt panel onto that dump trailer. I'm gonna to try to protect it a little bit so it can last, but it's only about a $15 purchase and that will help me condition that battery when I don't use the dump trailer very often to make sure I don't run into a dead battery when I'm at a transfer station or I'm trying to dump concrete out of the dump trailer, which can be a huge pain in the butt. Other applications are is it if you have a cabin or you have a piece of land and you're not there very often and you have a golf cart or a four wheeler or a lawnmower or a motorcycle or whatever, or you have a battery and it tends to die on you, but it's in a lean to or it's somewhere you could run a little bit of wire and get some sun on a panel, that would be a great application for one of these inexpensive units. And again, link in the description below. Let me know what you think from at least my opinion, this will not damage the battery. Would I connect it for years and years? Probably not, but for weeks and weeks or months and months, I'd be comfortable plugging these into a battery to condition them and just keep them topped off. But if you wanna to go to the kind of the next level where we actually do bring in a charge controller, just go one level up in terms of complexity, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all the steps and then show you what you can actually use that type of system for, for your own applications. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.